What's up, everybody? This is Jay, and I'm joined by... This is Rob. My co-host. <laughs> well, <laughs> I was going to do... I was going to do an introduction. <laughs> well, you know, I... I feel like... I feel like... I feel like it's a little... This is organic, Start over. Start over. This is organic stuff. <laughs> All right. I don't even want to start up with uh, what's up, everybody, but I don't know why I did. All right. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. This is Jay with the Crouch Jump Podcast, and as always, I'm joined by my co-host, Robert Lawson, the man, the myth, the legend. What's up, Rob? What's going on, guys? What you been up to, man? It's been a long, long time since we've done a podcast, man. I know. I've been uh, been not making podcasts, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Pretty But much. I'm ready. You know what? I'm, I'm ready. I'm back. I'm pumped. New Feels life has been be back. has been brought back into me. I'm I'm ready to yes start making some videos. Hell yeah, man! Uh, so you've actually been recording a couple gameplays and stuff too, right? I have. Good deal. Should be able to see those on the channel hopefully soon, eventually. And I, I I'll I'll go ahead and let people know the the few people who are listening right now, um, or the one person. <laughs> Fair I'm enough. I'm recording. So we got a we got a video um, of Peekaboo. I know people. I, I don't even, I don't even know if that's actually the name of the game. I, that's just not, that's what my buddies called it. And uh, we went ahead and recorded a little video. Um, it's like a compilation of the the funniest moments from it. It's basically uh, I'm not sure when it came out, but it's basically a um, it's like prop hunt, except it's an actual you know it's its own standalone game. So we cut we cut some stuff from that, and I actually think there's some pretty there's some pretty great moments in there. Um, and Sweet. then uh, I'm actually doing a let's play of a brand new game that just came out, Blasphemous. Yeah, which I'm is, really uh, excited for that. Yeah, it's I, I'm I'm like uh, three or four hours into the game and it's pretty solid so far. I'm I'm really enjoying it. Great art style. Um, I love Metroidvania, so it already gets points there. Yeah. And, um, Sweet. And, uh, no, it, it's it's good. It's fun. It's fun, and I'm I'm planning on having. I'm not gonna start releasing videos until I have it completely done. And I think I'm gonna make that a, a a trend, unless they're like, you know, like longer games. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Well, I've been playing, uh, Judgment lately. Um, that's Which really. Which one's Judgment? So Judgment is made by the team that makes Yakuza, that's and right. yeah. And it's actually really, really, really good. And I, I believe it takes place in the same universe because it has kind of similar characters that you can meet in between them. And uh, this time you play as a detective instead of an actual Yakuza, beating the crap out of other Yakuza. Um, but it, it's very, very good. I recommend if you like the Yakuza games, you need to pick this game up. It's phenomenal. Um, yeah, I, was, I, I went ahead and I looked, at a, uh, I looked it up real quick because I'd never heard of it, um, surprisingly. And uh, you were telling me it was like Yakuza, and, and uh, or it was made by the same people. And I looked up the videos, and it basically looks exactly like Yakuza. <laughs> it pretty <laughs> much is, yeah. It, it, it even plays like it, and and everything. All right, well, let us get into it, man. Uh, I guess we'll go ahead and start with the news. Ooh, news. Uh, so first on the list here, we actually have six, no, five items on the list for our news. Uh, first is from the Dragon Quest Twitter. They announced that Dragon Quest 1, 2, and 3 are coming to Switch September 27th. And I am super stoked for this. I don't know how you feel about it, Rob. Really? I mean, well, here's the thing. I don't, I don't really have, like, a big history of Dragon Quest. I, I really, the only Dragon Quest game I've played is Dragon Quest 11. And I'm actually, I'm like, I'm like, what, like 50, 60 hours into that game, and I'm, I'm still kind of, uh, a ways from beating it. I'm really enjoying it. But, uh, I don't, you know, I don't have those like fond memories like I do Final Fantasy, but I'm assuming since you're so excited for this that you do. Yes. So Dragon Quest Three was one of the first. I think it was uh, Game Boy Color. It was one of the first Game Boy Color games that I ever owned, and <laughs> I played the absolute shit out of it, man. It is phenomenal, and uh, I'm actually gonna pick this up pretty much really? as soon as it comes out. Yes, I'm gonna get it for Switch. At least Dragon Quest Three. I don't know if it comes in a bundle yet. Uh, and they haven't really showed too much of what it's going to be like but uh i think it's going to be awesome to be able to play that on my switch and kind of take it mobile and all that good stuff so 
pretty excited about that one. I'm surprised you've never played those like early ones on like Game Boy and stuff, man. No, man. Um, I don't know. They just. I don't know if they just never really presented themselves. Like, you know, you go out and I, f I feel like you see Final Fantasy in your face everywhere when it comes to, like, RPGs or even yeah. Game Boy. But I, I never – actually, you know, speaking of Dragon Quest, I, I, I remember now. I played Dragon Quest Monsters. Um, uh, which see, those I, that's games the ones I've awesome. never played. Really? Yeah, I never played any of those. They're, I mean, they're base, it's basically Pokemon except Dragon Quest, right? Yeah. I think, I mean, if I remember correctly. <laughs> uh, I would imagine so. Which, I mean, Pokemon and Dragon Quest, come on. <laughs> I'm surprised they haven't made. Uh, I'm surprised it's like a dead, you know, like franchise, like Dragon Quest Monsters. I, I feel like that could be like super successful if they made like a new one. Yeah, they've been going on the Dragon Quest Builders train nowadays. Yeah, they, so. they did, yeah Builders right now is, is is pretty cool. I actually really want to get that. I just got to find time and um, and then what do you, what was the one Dragon Quest uh, uh, Warriors or something? Oh yeah, yeah, the uh, made, Dynasty did, did Warriors. They make one or two of those. Warriors. Type. Musou, that's what I was thinking of. Musou type game. Yeah. Is that what they're called? Musou? I think that's what they're called. That's what I've always called them. So. <laughs> okay. I mean, I don't know. I just call them Dynasty Warrior games. <laughs> yeah, or like Warrior type games because there was Samurai Warriors, Dynasty, all kinds of, all kinds of them. What so. is the difference between Samurai Warriors and Dynasty Warriors? So Dynasty Warriors takes place in China, and Samurai Warriors takes place in Japan, and it kind of goes through like different periods, and kind of iconic generals are there, and all that kind okay, of stuff. Okay, so it's just. So. But, like, the mechanics, though, are pretty much the yeah. same, just different characters that have probably, like... Yeah, totally and then same different. with uh, Hyrule Warriors. Uh, that's considered a Musou game, I suppose. And then the new... Uh, what I'm excited about, the new Persona game that, that's a Musou game as well that's going to play, like, all those warrior-type games. Yeah, are you, you never heard of that me? one? I think i got to look this up. <laughs> yeah. What's it, what's it called? I, oh, man. I'm trying to remember what the hell it was called because they announced it at the same time that they announced Persona 5 Royale. Or the Royal, if you're from Japan. It's called Scramble? Yes, that's right, Shibuya Scramble, or something like that. Maybe um, it is just Scramble. I think I, I'm thinking of a different thing with Shibuya Scramble. That's but crazy. Figured, why, why would, yeah. Is it Persona in general, or Persona 5? I am not too sure. I don't think they really haven't showed a whole lot of it yet, so... But okay, I, I would assume it's got to be like Persona in general, because Persona Five. I hope so. Uh, it'd be too few characters. I feel like. Yeah. Well, then again, like Zelda, like how many characters do you play as in Zelda? I don't know. I haven't played Hyrule Warriors, That's not but. True. Uh, they made that work, I guess. Um, but I think that's one of the main reasons, the main character for Persona Five was added to Smash Brothers, was because that oh, game's coming out on the Switch. That. So. It's a Switch exclusive, right? Yeah. As okay. far as I know, I'm pretty sure. That's weird that they're. I mean, actually, I guess it's, maybe it's not too weird, but that uh, all these warrior like franchises are being exclusive to uh, Switch. Well, I guess I guess Dragon Warriors is on Steam and stuff, and I'm assuming it's probably on PlayStation as well. So. Yeah. Um, so on to the next number two. PlayStation 4 has sold 30 million units in the U.S. Analyst reveals this is by James Bachelor, I believe. Uh, over at GameIndustry.biz, quote, PlayStation 4 has sold 30 million units in the U.S. That's according to Nico Partners analyst Daniel Ahmad. I actually follow this dude on Twitter. You guys should, too. Uh, that's not part of the quote. But <laughs> you really should. He, uh, he presents all <laughs> kinds of stats. It's, it's really awesome. Uh, quote, who revealed the milestone via Twitter and noted that this means the U.S. accounts for around 30% of P of all PS4 sales, which is absolutely insane. Uh, and I actually pulled up a list of the best-selling consoles of all time, and that lands PS4 at about number six uh, for best-selling consoles, which is insane. I mean, that's crazy. Is that, that PS4 crazy? is... I mean, it's not too crazy. I guess everyone's buying PS4s these days. What's uh, uh is, is has switched? I'm assuming Switch has sold more than the PS4 at this point. No, no, it's yeah. actually the Switch has sold less than the Xbox One, at least according to no. these estimates. Yes, no, I don't believe it. <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, according to these estimates, uh, this is found on Wikipedia. Uh, just a list of best-selling consoles. Uh, Nintendo Switch is actually right below the Xbox One. The Nintendo Switch has sold 36.87 million units and the xbox one has sold 41 million so okay. it's right there it's catching up too eh? i mean yeah i mean how long's the switch been out compared to the xbox one right yeah exactly uh the, i i imagine switch is probably going to surpass that 
by gangbusters. Well, 30 million units in the U.S. So, okay. So, I mean, they're not that far. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. I think I got an idea of, of where everyone's at. Yeah. So, uh, right now, PS4 actually has uh, estimated 100 million units sold just in general. What? Yeah. <laughs> So, mm. if you think about it, uh, and that's from numbers that they released in December of 2018. They sold like nine, 91 million units, and so then analysts kind of figure that uh, it's about at 100 million nowadays. And so, that's why here it says it's about 30% of all PS4 sales, because 30 million, 100 million. So, yeah, man, it's, that's fucking crazy. That. <laughs> That is pretty crazy. Okay, so but it's number six. Who are the ones above it? I want to know. So I mean, the PS2, ones above obviously, it. right? Yes. Wii. But uh, so we is right after it at one hundred one. About we's number five. Yeah, we is number five. Wow. Okay. Okay. Above that is actually the PlayStation One, the first PlayStation at one hundred two. Really? Yeah. Then above that, Game Boy and Game Boy Color. They, they, okay. I guess they kind of put both of those together. <laughs> And that's 118, so that's a big jump between 102 and 118. Then we have the Nintendo DS, which is not a surprise at all. No. <laughs> Everyone what I knew had 3DS? a DS. Does 3DS not sell enough to get up there? So 3DS is actually still above the Xbox One, but it's not a, it, the PS4 has actually sold more than the 3DS. Okay. Uh, and then above the Nintendo DS is the top holding place, which is the PlayStation 2. At uh, it, it's estimated over 155 billion units sold. 155 what? Million units sold. Uh, how many how many people are on the planet? <laughs> don't don't be giving me geological questions now. Uh, <laughs> how many? People live. <laughs> yeah, look that up. On I don't Earth. remember. It's like 7.2 billion uh, or something like that. 7.5 billion. So you're oh, telling me how, how, how many how many billion uh, PS2 sold? No, not billion, million. Oh, okay. Them. I was about to say for some reason I don't know. <laughs> I, I have to go back on the recording, but I could have swore I heard you say billion like three times. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's insane. Okay. Yeah, that'd be that's more. Where that's like everyone buying point. three PS2s or some shit. I'm not good at math. So, People listening are either going to think you're crazy or I'm crazy after this. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Um, Maybe I was. Uh... I'm actually reading something right now. So Nintendo Switch sales hit 36.87 million. Right. Yep. This is a recent article, uh, matching PS4's lifetime pace. So, Switch is a uh, for the U.S. As... Or for uh, just in it doesn't. Well, I'm. Not oh no no, it's pace. That's right so. because the the Switch came out so much later. So. Um. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because the Switch came out in 2017 and. Um, I'm assuming what PS4 came out like 2012, 2013. Uh, oh man, that was like oh, 2013. Came out in November 2013, yeah. so the end of That's 2013. Right. I was um, broke, so I didn't get one for a hot minute. But <laughs> <laughs> now you have the pro. Yeah. Playing that 4K so, TV. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. That's why you don't. That see. That's Only why he doesn't. That's why he doesn't record. It's because he plays on his PS4 and his 4K TV. My nice 4K TV. Like only a gamer should. That's disgusting. <laughs> Number three. GameStop store design or redesign, I should say, leaked. Uh, this is a story on IGN by Matt Kim. Quote, a GameStop store in prior Oklahoma posted a video tour of what it looks like uh, or what looks like a new layout of the store. A source familiar with GameStop's operation, who's requested... Uh, I fucking hate saying an <laughs> There we go. <laughs> I always fuck up that word. Uh, has confirmed that the store matches the blueprint layout of the des- the redesigns shown at GameStop's annual conference. Uh, I don't know if you've seen this, dude. It is <laughs> it is crazy, man. Uh, uh, I haven't seen it. Yeah, you should definitely check it out. So uh, in the in the Facebook video, I'll kind of give a rundown of it. Uh, they did a little bit of video tour over there in Oklahoma, and there's like, you walk into the store, there's all kinds of, so the walls are still laid out with video games per usual, but instead of like those TVs that just kind of sit there and you stand and you have to hold on to the controller and you try to play demos, they have yeah. that, but it's like an Xbox, a PlayStation with a couple games, and there's a couch just in the middle of the store, dude, a fucking couch, and... <laughs> 
you walk further back, and there's this whole play area where I guess they're going to do, like, board games and Magic the Gathering and, and uh, that kind of stuff and, like, uh, all kinds of stuff like that. So they're, they're uh, trying Warhammer. to kill those, uh, those local shops that do that. Pretty much. And I think they're going to take over that scene because there are a couple tables for that. And they also have CRT TVs that have N64. They have GameCube, the original Xbox hooked up. And so, basically, when you go shopping for your new Prada, you can bring your child into GameStop at the mall and just drop his ass off, and he'll be having a blast. Because he'll be able to play all these old retro games, all these hmm. new games, let's sit down on the couch. Uh, I imagine that's hell for the employees because they're pretty much babysitters now. I didn't think about that from a, from the, from like a parent's perspective or kid's perspective. I was like thinking about it from my perspective. Like, why would I want to go in there and, and do all that? But, but when you put it that way, I guess that makes sense. You know, you, yep. get, you get a kid in there, the kid, you know, you go do your shopping while the kid's at the mall playing video games. And the next thing you know, like he's going, oh, mom, I want this Smash Brothers Melee or whatever he's playing, even if it doesn't have to be retro. But yeah, exactly. And I actually used to work at a store called Hastings. Some people may know it. And people would drop their fucking kids off all the time. Oh, my God. And leave them, yeah. And uh, we kind of had the same kind of setup where we had, like, Magic the Gathering tables and, and little TVs that they could play on and, and stuff like that. That They would just drop their kids off and, and leave. Uh, <laughs> so I imagine GameStop employees are super thrilled. Um, I mean, it, it looks cool. I mean, it's better than what they were doing. I mean, I haven't been... It's been forever since I've even stepped inside a GameStop. I feel like I do everything digital nowadays, like most right. people. So yeah, I, don't, I don't buy physical copies of anything. Yeah, but I do. I've always been interested in Warhammer, and I do play sport games, and I do. I used to play Magic the Gathering, and so I mean that's kind of cool that they're doing that. But I like my local shops better. I guess it's really it would be very difficult for me to move from a local game shop to a GameStop. I suppose I don't know. It's kind of weird. Number four. So I'm just going to go over some Tokyo Game Show notable mentions, uh, at least to us, or me, since I wrote this list. But, <laughs> yeah. Uh, starting off with Project Resistance. Uh, so Project Resistance, have you heard anything about this yet, Rob? Uh, I don't think so, no. Uh. It, you like well, I guess it's more your roommate, but have you really played too much of the Resident Evil games or anything like that? Uh, I mean, I played the new Resident Evil Two, and I played Resident Evil Five. I've, I've beaten Resident Evil Two, the new one. I've beaten Resident Evil Five. I played a little bit of Resident Evil Four and Six. Well, that's a lot of them. So yeah, uh, Project <laughs> Resistance, uh, the Resident Evil Two. Uh, it looks like they're using the same engine as like they would like, and it kind of looks like the same gameplay of uh, Resident Evil Two. But it's kind of, how should I explain it, uh, like Left 4 Dead. Like, think Left 4 Dead where you're playing, like, a four-player co-op and you're just running through a mission. But there's hey, another what? player. What's that? That that sounds that sounds awesome. No, I mean, what you're explaining now, I think I, remember, uh, I think I remember hearing about it. I don't think I've read any articles. But to me, just based off a little bit of information, if this is Resident Evil 2 with multiplayer and kind of a Left 4 Dead format where you're going through a level and shooting baddies... Um, and especially if it's kind of like a, a maybe a little bit more faster paced Resident Evil 2 with co-op, that sounds amazing. Yeah, and, um, I'm totally down for it. I would straight up buy that day one if, it, yeah. if it's what I'm thinking of. And I know a lot of people were upset that they weren't remaking Resident Evil 3 or something, but I'm actually happy that they're taking this a whole other direction. You know, I played Resident Evil 3 in the past. So I don't need to play it again. Although I said that when Resident Evil 2 was coming out, but... I don't know, remakes, remasters, there's, uh, in my opinion, way too many of them, and I, I, I'm looking Resident forward. Evil 3. Uh, I did, but I didn't care for it as much as Resident Evil 2, so I'm pretty happy, and I would have either preferred this or Resident Evil 8. That would have been, if it was Resident Evil 3, like, remaster or whatever, uh, I might have skipped it. But this looks interesting, and uh, it looks like, yeah, Left 4 Dead style, but it does show that, like, one person there's a fifth person that joins the game and they kind of control it's almost like the left 4 dead multiplayer where they controlled like the uh the special zombies special it looks infected. like yeah yeah the special infected 
and uh, this looks about the same, where like the, the guy, he places the special infected down, although it's one person, and then he's able to control him if he wants to, or he doesn't have to. That's and, interesting. Uh, kind yeah, of like a, cool. a DM type thing. So if he's placing people down, that's that's kind of that's interesting. I like that. Yeah, it is a lot like uh, a Dungeon Master or something like that. Uh, let's see what else is from a Tokyo Game Show. Oh yeah, they showed up uh, 49 minutes of Death Stranding. I didn't watch it. But I didn't watch it either. <laughs> My whole thing with Death Stranding, I, I haven't been watching ever since kind of like the they started showing a little bit more of what's going on. I'm I'm already sold. I, I don't need to watch anything else. Um, I'm gonna get it day one. You know, it could be like the worst game ever, but I you know it's Kojima and I, I'm 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 already all in. So yeah, I'm already all in as well. And uh, Sony seems to be doing this lately, where they just keep showing more and more and more and more. Uh, they did it with Spider-Man. I felt like there was way too many trailers for Spider-Man. I mean, Jesus Christ. How many trailers for Spider-Man did we get? They got to uh, hype stuff up, man. Yeah. And then Death Stranding, it's like all the time we just get trailer after trailer. I kind of want to meet – and I know there's like character trailers out, and those were those were cool. But I kind of want to – I wish – I almost wish I didn't watch them because I, I would like to meet these characters in game and be like, oh, wow, that's really cool. You know, the guy, like Heartman, he's only able to stay alive for like 20 minutes or whatever, then he dies, and he has to like rejuvenate himself every single 20 minutes. It's like, that's really, really cool. And if I had learned that while I was playing the game, I'd probably be like enthralled, but oh well. Uh, and I feel the same way about Left 4 Dead, by the way. I feel like uh, they, they have gameplay now for Left 4 Dead. And it's like, I'm already sold on it, man. Just, just give me a couple trailers here and there. And then wait, 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 uh, wait, it. what? Yeah, dude, they, they've been showing a bunch of trailers, and I and I think they plan to show more. Wait, of what? Uh, Wait, did I say Left 4 Dead? Yeah. Oh, shit, son of a bitch. Uh, <laughs> fucking... I start going like, oh, wait, sorry. did I miss something <laughs> Not really Not Left 4 Dead, oh, shit. Um, uh, what's the name of that fucking game, the Naughty Dog game? Uh, uh, the Last of Us. The Last of Us. That yeah, it's both zombie games. Uh, yeah. The Last right, of so Us. I see. I don't need to see anything of The Last of Us two either because that's going to be a day one buy. Exactly. That's what I'm. That's what I'm trying to say is that like they need to keep it a little bit more on the down low. I don't need to see more of this because uh, Spider Man. I literally had to force myself to just quit watching the trailers, and I feel like they're doing this with a lot <laughs> of their games. But we'll see. Uh, and then some more notable mentions from Tokyo Game Show is we got another trailer for Tales of Arise showing off some gameplay. Have you watched this? Uh, I only watched the original trailer because Tales of Arise I also plan to get, and I don't need to. <laughs> it's funny because like the the when I was a kid I used to watch uh you know like all this stuff I used to soak it in you know it used to be everything. Now it's like after I watch like one trailer I'm like I'm good I like I, I have decided I'm gonna get that game I'm not gonna get that game. Yeah, and, me and uh, you are both uh, pretty big Tales fans. I know you played a couple and I played a couple so. Yeah, I, I actually I played Tales of the Abyss and I actually put like 80 hours in that game and then quit because I realized oh, I shit. didn't like it. <laughs> I don't know how, dude. Tales of the then Abyss I... is like the best one. I still have <laughs> how the hell that uh, happened, dude. I, I the main character, I just couldn't stand him, and I don't know. Yeah, it he just... goes through a shift though. Cuts his hair. He cuts his hair. Oh my god, I yeah. forgot about that. <laughs> oh my god, I should go back and play it. Um, <laughs> no, and then I I played Tales of Berseria, and I loved that. And then I actually I want to go back and play Tales of uh, Vesperia. I said, what did I say originally? Tales of Berseria is the one I played. The one I want to go back to is Tales of Vesperia, which I played a little bit of but didn't actually finish. Yeah, that's another good one. Um, I'm in the same boat as you, except I, I saw this trailer, and uh, I'm, I'm sold. And again, this is this is what they need to do. They need to just show that one trailer, that this this trailer was like more gameplay-esque, and I'm good. I'm sold. Well, the thing uh, about Tales of Arise is, is it looks it looks like an evolution. It looks like because I feel like the 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 Tales games that have been coming out have been just kind of like churned out a little bit. Like you know they had like a year of development or something, and, and they were kind of thrown out there to make some money. And uh, and this looks like the most polished Tales game, just based off one trailer. Maybe I'm making too many assumptions, but it looks like the most polished Tales game since Vesperia. And on top of that, there the art style. This is the first time I think the art style feels drastically different. Um, I mean, still has some things that keep it tails, but it feels drastically different. It feels like they're taking a step in a different direction for the series, and I think that's what the series really needs to be less of just kind of like a rehash cell stuff, even though Berseria had a great great characters and story. Yeah. Um, but it just feels like an evolution. Yeah, no, it looks totally different. Uh, it looks, yeah, it definitely looks way more action-y. 
Um, I'm super stoked for it. Uh, it, it is weird. Uh, in the trailer, I mean, maybe I just didn't notice it because I, I was kind of watching it uh, just kind of like off to the side. And it it looks like you play like one main character or something because it looked like it was just kind of following that one main character around and, and you were just kind of like battling people. I don't know. I mean, obviously, you're probably going to have companions because that's a typical Tales thing, but uh, it definitely looks like the combat is a little more streamlined than just touching a monster and going to battle mode. Hmm. But, yeah, definitely well, check it out. When you say streamlined, you mean like uh, like just fighting in the open world instead of like uh, kind of I would say a little, little bit more like something? Final Fantasy 15. Oh. Oh. Yeah. All right. That's interesting. Yeah, like more like Final Fantasy 15 where you already see the monster coming and you just kind of run up and attack them. Or Kingdom like Hearts. That. Yeah. Uh, and speaking of Final Fantasy, they also came out with that new trailer for Final Fantasy 7, which looks absolutely fantastic and I can't fucking wait. I I'm starting to get the feeling that I'm, I'm going to have to start watching these trailers so I understand what's going on so I can talk about them on the podcast. <laughs> that That is true. <laughs> Because, like I said, I, I just apply the same logic to all these games. Final Fantasy VII, I watched the first trailer, and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to buy this. So <laughs> that, That's very true. Well, I mean, this is just all everything that they've showed at Tokyo Game Show. So, uh, But it's more of the same. So you really didn't miss, miss much. Uh, you're, if you're sold on Final Fantasy VII, then you're pretty much going to get this game. And if you played it in the past, you're probably going to get this game. Uh, it looks about the same. You're still playing, again, like Final Fantasy 15 almost. You're just kind of running up, attacking shit. And I actually like that more than uh, the turn base. Because I know when the game was announced, everyone was like, what? You know, it's not turn base. What the hell? What the fuck? But I think I like this combat better. What about no, you? I mean, I agree. I think, <laughs> I think uh, that type of combat, uh, it. it... I mean, I, actually, I don't know. I just that combat's it's <laughs> nice, but I, yeah. I I don't know. I can't, I'm trying to think of a game that, that is comparable with that type of combat, and I'm not coming up with anything off the top of my head. Uh, like the the action combat or the turn based. The action. Uh, yeah, I guess Kingdom Hearts or Final Fantasy 15 or something. I guess. Right. Final Fantasy really Seven Crisis of Core. Those. Well, anyways, the new Kingdom Hearts. Anyways. I played the but new I guess Kingdom that... Hearts. It's okay. <laughs> Gameplay wise, fantastic. Uh, just everything else wise, not really. But uh, besides that, uh, that was really all the things that I specifically cared about uh, at Tokyo Game Show. Go check it out. Go check out the trailers. Uh, go check out the cosplay. It's lit over there in Japan. Number five. Uh, this is a big one. So, me and you have been playing Gears a lot. So, mm -hmm. this kind of pertains. This is uh, this is crazy news, at least to me. So, Gears Five breaks record as biggest launch for any Xbox Game Studios game this generation, says Aaron Greenberg, Xbox Games Marketing General Manager. Quote: The performance easily doubled the first week's debut of Gears of War Four and made Gears 5 the most played Xbox Game Studios title in its first week since 2012's Halo 4. Which is insane. So people are loving why. Gears 5. Why is that? Two reasons. One is because Gears 5 is way more polished and was way better advertised than Gears of War 4. Yes, um, I agree. The second <laughs> thing is because they released it on Steam. Oh, so, did Gears 4 not come out on Steam? I don't think so. Me and you are both played on PC, and yeah, we're, I remember we're, we're, we were, we're playing, playing it. Xbox Game Pass. So yeah, and we were majority of the time we were playing Gears Four on Game Pass. But right, yeah, I mean that's a huge factor. People love Steam, right? Way more than the Epic Store, so that's at least good. Uh, even if that wasn't the case, that's crazy. I mean, since Halo Four on twenty twelve. Well, uh, to be fair, though, they say Xbox Gaming, or they say the Xbox Game Studio game, but what other Game Studio games have they come out with? So this is since Halo 4, right? Yeah, so what Halo 5. What else have they really come out with that is, like, <laughs> huge? I mean, Halo 5, you have Forza, I mean, uh, Sea of Thieves, 
Uh, yeah, but those their all games had, haven't like, been that great. Had, like, uh, crackdown, issues, I know, guess. Or their niche markets. Yeah, like Crackdown. I don't know. I thought they Crackdown was kind of a dud, but I mean, I guess I shouldn't. I shouldn't take away from the achievement. I, I think what what this really means is that there is that Xbox is now coming out with like quality stuff again <laughs> yeah yeah that's that's what i want to talk to you about so with gears 5 me and you have both been playing it we've been playing the multiplayer and uh we haven't really gotten to the the story yet but uh, uh in terms of multiplayer i actually really really like this gears 5 multiplayer especially since they added execution as a playlist this past weekend and that was i've the, been playing that was a the problem gears 4. yeah that was a huge problem in gears 4 we couldn't get into any matches of execution but this time around, it looks like we're playing with Xbox people, so uh, there's a bigger population. But uh, I actually like the maps. I like the characters. Uh, I do think it is a little overrated right now. Like, I've seen stuff where people are giving it a 10 out of 10 and shit, and, uh, and I haven't played the story or anything, so maybe it is. But uh, where are all the classic stuff, man? What do you mean, classic stuff? Like, like we just have Marcus. Like I wish we could oh, have yeah. Dom. Uh, I wish Cole? we could have yeah Cole Baird. And I know that this is made by the Coalition, which they also make Gears for. They kind of want to make it their own game, but that's like having Halo. And instead of calling it like legendary difficulty, they called it very hard or something, or expert difficulty. And you're just like, oh, that's kind of <laughs> weird. You know, it's like what? Why would you do that? Like I know you want to do your own thing, but like why would you? Why would you just not put? any yeah, of the so, classic well, stuff the thing, it's, in. it's it's multiplayer so i mean they don't have to stick, stick all these characters in the, in the story you know if they're doing their own thing but come on it's, it's multiplayer uh, yeah that's what i'm and saying and if anything gears war doesn't exactly have the most variety of ca- kind of like the look of characters so bring in the the people we know and love and and i just don't see why not yeah uh so i so far i don't think the game deserves a 10 out of 10 but uh, it is very snappy. It's very. It feels good to me, at least. I know people have been missing like the clunkiness of like Gears Two, and Gears One, where like everything was like very a uh, little more visceral, I guess. I actually like the little bit of faster gameplay, and it, it makes everything a lot more intense, especially for execution. I don't know why these people are playing Escalation out here, but execution is where it's at. So. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, I, I don't understand that. That was one of the things you were telling me about Gears 4. Because um, when I, I tried to play Gears 4, because when the Game Pass came out, I was like, okay, cool, I didn't play much of Gears 4, let's get on and play. And then everyone, no one played Execution. Everyone hated Execution. It didn't pop up in the in the playlists. Um, it, it was, like, in, impossible. And, and Jaden, you were telling me that, um, you were telling me that apparently everyone hated Execution. Yeah, like, but from what I was seeing on Reddit not, and everything. It's it not esports. Bad. <laughs> yeah, so, apparently they have the ultimate esports mode, but it's classic gears, man. If you if you want to play classic gears, you have to play execution. And it, Gears Five didn't even launch with execution. Remember, we got it launch day, yeah, or actually yeah. early, because we had the Game Pass Ultimate. It took like a week. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's here's my thing. Execution isn't classic Gears of War to me. It is Gears of War to me. If you're playing Gears of War and it does not have execution, then it's not Gears of War. And I 100% agree. Speaking of game modes that I would that I love that I wish they would bring back because I think they, they introduced it in Gears 2 and I'm pretty I want to say it was in Gears 3 um, Wingman I love that was my favorite mode I actually liked Wingman more than Execution I want yeah, that to come Wingman back Wingman was really really the, fun the dynamic it had with like four teams of two um, I don't know if it was four teams or five teams but with the team multiple teams so you were sitting here had like uh, instead of it just being like one team that's all working together you realize that you could get into like a three way fight and that's actually pretty awesome yeah, it more was uh, really, really cool. And I hope, and I saw their little roadmap, and they said that, like, oh, you know, we have these game modes here now, and we're going to add more in the future. And it looks like they are, because we got execution over the weekend, which is cool. But, yeah, uh, that kind of sucks that there's, and there's no Carmine, like, at all. There's not even, like, a Carmine that they made up. Blasphemy. Yeah, like, what the hell is that we shit? We need Fuel Depot back, too. Yeah, we do need Field Depot. That was a fucking amazing map. Uh, the, see, I actually like the maps. So, like I said, Gears 5 is a great game, but yeah, I wish we had some of the old classics back. Maybe we're just old men. But I'm, I'm not convinced on the maps yet. You're not convinced? That's fair. That is fair. All right, let's. so that is all the news. 
Uh, I'm going to kick it off to new game releases over to Rob. Rob, take it away. New game releases. So, it's the 16th right now, so these games all, it's a Monday. These games all come out, um, I shouldn't say they all come out, but they start, some of them come out tomorrow. Um, Tuesdays is generally the, um, or at least it was the the release date, right? The kind of for games. Yeah, a lot of stuff coming out Fridays nowadays. I think they actually realize that kids have school and... <laughs> Adults work. Yeah, why was Tuesday kind of like the day previously? I don't have the slightest clue. <laughs> maybe it had something to do with like store shipments and stuff like that. Now everything's digital, so they're... Yeah, maybe. I, I don't know. That's just my guess. Yeah. All right, so let's go through the games. We have, let's first up, we have uh, Solitaire Legend of the Pirates. So if you were a huge Solitaire fan, you got sick of Windows Solitaire all the damn time... <laughs> You got the uh, knockoff Pirates of the Caribbean version. Oh, man. And uh, I don't really know anything about this game. I just see it on this list. And uh, <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> it's coming out on PC and Mac. Um, I mean, cool if you're bringing the Solitaire. Yeah. I- I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, skip that one now. And uh, <laughs> now we have uh, – so to more, to more pressing games. We have AI, the Somnium Files. Now, I've actually never heard of this one either. I've never heard of that one either. So um, many indie games these days. Back when we were doing our previous podcast, I swear to God there wasn't this many indie games <laughs> out they, and about, man. They're ramping up. Oh, man. my gosh. But this is coming <laughs> out on everything. So this is, well, not an Xbox, apparently. PC, PlayStation 4, and Nintendo Switch. Xbox getting the X. I know, right? Um, AI, The Somnia Files, is a sci-fi adventure game with a branching narrative where the player controls a detective named Konami Date who is investigating a series of murders in Tokyo where all the victims have had their left eye removed. Throughout the game, the player can enter the dream of suspects through the use of Date's cybernetic abilities where they can solve puzzles to reveal new information related to the case. AI is being developed by Spike Chunsoft with Kotaro Uchikashi, creator of Zero Escape series. Nice. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, wait, what? It's the creator of Zero <laughs> I actually Escape, like the, right? Yeah, I actually like those games a lot. Yeah, oh, yeah. Those, I, played the, I played the first one on DS, and then I played... Uh, well, I it played... was like 999 nine, nine yeah. or something like that, right? I never yeah, beat that. I love that game. That game was awesome. Um, but Yeah, another game for him, apparently. Okay, well, that's well, a pleasant well, surprise. Well, yeah, that's that's crazy. I was not expecting that whatsoever. <laughs> but that's coming out tomorrow. Um, let me see what type of game this is. I mean, assuming it's got to be the same. So it's, it looks like it's a Yeah, um, same style. Yeah, it's like full 3D looking. Yeah. Um, but I'm assuming it's probably got to be like the same kind of style, like you're, you're puzzle solving. Um, but this looks like it actually has a budget, you know, like it's not made specifically for like DS or something. So, yeah. um, I mean, that's cool. I mean, now I have to check that out. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> maybe that would maybe that would be a good one for uh, for a Let's Play. A nice puzzle yeah, game. Yeah, for real. Unless you get it up for your well, but then again, it has your other two ones you love: PlayStation Four and Nintendo Switch. You want to play it in your bed, or do you That's want to play it on your 4K TV? My nice, sweet 4K TV, like a real gamer. But this would be a game that you know, whatever. If you play it on 4K, I feel yeah, like that's true. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe 4K is just that good. Eh. Next one, we have uh, Groundhog Day, like father, like son. It's coming out for <laughs> PS4 and PC, and this game. Uh, does not have a description from the website I'm I'm reading. <laughs> so is this a video game sequel to the 1993 cult classic film Groundhog Day? What? <laughs> what? Okay. And you're reading this from a uh, giant bomb. Yeah, right? yeah. I'm taking this straight from Giant Bomb, but it's like a cartoony looking thing. Uh, Groundhog Day. I, 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 it's got some images, but it doesn't really tell me anything about this game. And, and <laughs> Fair enough. It looks like it's all VR stuff. Is it? Okay. So I guess it's. That yeah. makes sense because they do a lot of like little spin-off and one-off things for VR. Um, yeah, a lot of tie-ins. But that's weird though. Groundhog Day, you know, it's not like what are they advertising? Usually, it's like an advertisement to like a movie or a show. But Groundhog Day is like a thirty-year-old movie. Yeah, unless they have another movie coming out. Maybe. Uh-oh. I don't know. Uh oh. <laughs> Next, we have uh, Castle Crashers Remastered coming out for the Nintendo yes. Switch. And I mean, I play. I have my fill of Castle Crashers, but. I, I just don't understand. I guess I, I understand to an extent, but I, they need to come out with Castle Crashers too. That just needs to happen. You know what? You're absolutely right. And I was actually complaining about Remasters before, but I might actually play this a little bit. Really? But you are right that it's like we played it so much back on the Xbox 360 days. It's like, I don't know. 
kind well, of weird. In Castle Crashers itself, it really lends to, and I, I think it's perfect for the Switch to be honest. But it, 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 you really need to play it co-op. Like I feel like it's not, it's not as yeah. fun by yourself. You're just, it just kind of feels repetitive sure. by yourself. But when you're playing other people, it's, it's fun. I don't know. I wonder if it's local. That would be cool. It's got to have local, right? If it doesn't, that's that's that'd be a travesty. Yeah, like hand off the because every switch pretty much comes with two controllers, and if you could hand it off and because I don't remember there being that many buttons <laughs> to the game, <laughs> so if no, it, it wasn't could, a complicated. I, I'm sure. Yeah, if it could be local co-op, that'd be a ton of fun. Next game we have Sagebrush for PC and Mac. So. Let's see. Yeah, there's no real a short first person narrative adventure game. That's that's the description we got. Oh. And cool. there's not really much well, for uh screenshots either. So I don't know anything about this. Yeah. Actually now that I clicked <laughs> on it, it says uh PlayStation four, Xbox One, PC, Mac, and Nintendo Switch. So everything. So but, if you're super excited for Sagebrush, good for you. It's coming out tomorrow. Have fun. And I, I'm assuming um Consistent four release release August six. So I'm assuming uh, the reason why I initially saw it for um, PC and Mac is because it's probably out on the other consoles already, and now it's coming out on PC uh, in two days. So okay, apparently they yeah, want to be cool games, and, and unique. Come out on a Wednesday. Yeah. Next we have Overland coming out for PS4, Xbox One, PC, and Switch. Overland is a survival strategy game set in a post-apocalyptic United States. It has randomized isometric levels with turn-based combat and scavenging for fuel and other resources. Now, I've never heard of this one either. What is with all these games I've never heard of? And this actually looks... Uh, again, man, indie games. They they just come out like like 30 of them every week. That's true. You know what? I mean, they can't you really can make get a game right now. budget probably. Yeah. But I tell you what, I'm looking at these screenshots right now, and it has a very cool art style. So it's isometric. So think of like... Uh, uh, I was about to say Dragon Age. Think of, uh, what, 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 I, okay, I can't. Think of Wasteland too. Think of Wasteland. Think of the old Fallout. Okay. Think of Boulder's Gate. Um, but it's kind of looks like it has like a unique style like to divinity. it. It looks like, um, I don't know. The art style looks very unique, very beautiful, very beautiful art style. It 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 doesn't have like a whole map from the looks of it. I'm not for sure how it goes. About. It shows like a square of land. Uh, that you're moving around, you move your characters. It's turn-based, but it's like XCOM like tactics movements. or something. Yeah, like tactics. Uh, and it, and it looks like they kind of give you uh, show you a grid at a time. So I wonder huh. I wonder how That's like how weird. it progresses. You know, like um, yeah, if it's by like encounters and or, or or what it is. But it's it's already caught my interest just based off how it looks because it looks very unique. Yeah, it looks very unique. I. I I would if you if you like isometric games, I would go look up a screenshot, maybe a video, um, because its its look will probably pique your interest just from that. Yeah, shout outs to those indie developers out there. Yeah, I mean that's I think that's probably one of the best ways to advertise when you don't have an advertising budget is make your game look unique. Yeah, for real. Next we got police stories, and this is coming out for uh, this is coming out or for PC, Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, and PlayStation Four. Wait, Police Story? Isn't that already a game on PS4? It might already be out on PS4. This might be uh, – it's coming out on PC and Switch. Everything else. Yeah. I mean, that's cool. I, I hear really good things about Police Stories. I actually have a buddy of mine that uh, played them the game, and he really, really, really liked it. So check out Police Stories. Again, another art a game that's, like, super artsy and super indie. What type and, of game uh, is it? I imagine – I think it's uh, more of a visual novel, okay. if I remember correctly. But, uh, yeah, it, it – it looks it looks pretty good. So I actually if it's a it's on sale a lot on PS4. So if you have a chance to pick it up, pick it up. Uh, you know everyone's got two bucks sitting somewhere. So is it only two bucks? I mean the sales oh, are really sale. really cheap. <laughs> 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 yeah, because it, it normally drops from like fifteen dollars or some ten dollars, ten fifteen dollars of what it's normally at, and it drops down. So the next game is a game that I'm super hyped for. Um, I'm debating whether I want to get it day one. It all, I guess it all just depends on how busy I am and uh, how if, you know, if I'm playing other games. But I think I'm going to get course. it day one. Is The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, the uh, remaster that's coming out on Switch? Yeah, so I actually have – I've only seen a couple screenshots of this game. I've never even seen a trailer. So what is this? <laughs> so Link's Awakening was a, a Game Boy game that came out like way back. Um, and, and it was kind of developed, 
I don't know if it was developed by the main team because it has a, it was developed by I think a side team, and they actually like incorporated like a lot of like Mario looking stuff, like a lot of the classical Nintendo looking stuff, and and um, and so in that way it's it's unique. It's a unique Zelda game, but it plays it plays traditionally, you know, like isometric. Um, you're you're walking around with with Link, and they took this 2D game that was very simplistic because it was made on the Game Boy, and they created a a, a 3D like it's it's full 3D. Um, it's still the isometric view, but it's it got this beautiful art style, and it's kind of a unique looking art style too. Uh, um, uh, simplistic yet uh, detailed. Probably that's the one that came out. Born... So that came out on Game Boy, right? Yes, uh, the original. Okay, I think I actually do remember that then. Yeah, so it's, it's like a full that. remake. And if you had like four swords or something like that, you also got Link's Awakening. And it was like a whole bundle with no. Game Boy Advance, at least. It didn't. It, or is that a different one? Yeah, that was a different one. It, it wasn't bundled with uh, Four Swords. W- um, never mind then. But because Four Swords was actually a Game Boy Advance game. Yeah, that's yeah. So Four Swords. Yeah, that was a Game Boy. Advance. I thought it came with like Link's Awakening or something. Mm-mm, nope, it came and with a different one. I can't remember what it was, but. Uh, gotcha. Link's Awakening was its own standalone one. Uh, I I played it. I never beat it. Um, I think that's the way with a lot of those classic Zelda games. I don't think I was good enough to, to, to beat those games as a kid. <laughs> but um, yeah. the only thing the only thing that makes me a little weary is that this is like a forty dollar release, I think. And uh, and I, I guess, but I mean, there. at first I was like, uh, forty forty dollars for what, what is essentially a Game Boy game? Is it sixty? Yeah. No, I said it's better than sixty. You know, what? I better check. Let me let me check before I start saying. Because it might be sixty. I mean, if it's sixty, I might have to pass on it. Because I, I don't know. I really like Zelda just as oh, much as the it next is person. 60. But is it sixty? It's, it's See, I like Zelda, 60. but my favorite games are always like Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time, like these three D where you're actually running around. I I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of these kind of classic feeling like. Where it's like kind of top down, or I guess isometric, or however you want to say it, and it is. I've never been a fan of those type of Zelda games. I think the only one I really played was like Oracle of Seasons or Oracle of Time, and uh, that was just because I had them. And yeah, I mean they were good. And I'll never say that this probably, you know, I'm sure this is actually pretty good, but I was never a fan. I was never a fan of these type of Zelda games. I, I I like actually. Like the third person action view of Link, right. and uh, I kind of got used to that, especially with the N64 and all that. So, well, that's fair enough. I mean, yeah. it, it is a different type of like going from the 3D versions of Zelda or from the 2D to the 3D. It, it's it's definitely a different experience. Um, in fact, the, the 3D Zeldas can be just different experiences from each other. Um, yeah, that's but true. yeah, no, uh, Link's Awakening for sixty dollars is 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 a is a steep price. But if you got, man, I'm looking at the screenshots right now. And it's so it's so beautiful looking, and I mean I do uh, want more I, games on my Switch. I got the Switch, and I feel like I'm playing it not as much as I should be. So I think you're playing your Switch more than me, more than I'm playing mine. <laughs> Maybe because I, I got I originally got Mario. I was super pumped for Mario. Um, Ga- I was about to call it Galaxy, Mario Odyssey, because it it was kind of Super Mario 64 is one of my favorite games of all time, and the Mario's yeah. after that kind of focused more on platforming than the uh, collectathon kind of uh ex- exploration and this one was kind of going back yeah. to the collectathon exploration but then i don't know it just doesn't have the conciseness of it it just feels like you know they were just plastering stars everywhere and, and it just feels less satisfying when you collect those stars because there's just too many and um, yeah that sucks i i agree with you on that point uh especially when dude uh, b- Something about Switch games, they don't decrease in price, because I've been waiting... So, I have a Switch, and I still haven't played the newest Zelda, like, uh... Uh... What is that one called? The newest one. Shit. Whatever. The fucking newest Zelda. Haven't played it, because, for some reason, Switch games never decrease in price. Well, that's so, I, that's been like a Nintendo thing at the very least. I mean, since as far back as I remember starting buying games, which was GameCube. I mean, I I went I played like you know the old Nintendo stuff. Uh, uh, Breath back of the then, Wild. But I wasn't buying my own games. Fuck. I didn't care about price at the time. But I know yes. I, as far back as GameCube, they really didn't lower prices unless games were like four or five years old. 
Yeah, that's very true. And uh, Breath of the Wild was what I was thinking about, and I ha- st- to this day I've never even touched it. What? Because dude, that's worth uh, yeah, sixty dollars, even... dude. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it's worth sixty dollars, and that's the type of Zelda game that I like, where it is like a third person action yeah. game, and it looks fucking phenomenal. It's and that's incredible. one of the reasons I bought a Switch. But every time I look at it, and I'm like, oh man. It's still up there in price. Like, it never decreases in price. It's, never gonna, it's not going to go down in price for another, like, three years, man. Probably. And, and uh, you should buy it. Yeah. It's absolutely worth it. It's worth it more than Zelda Link's Awakening. <laughs> yeah, I know. I need, I, I need to get it. And uh, on Amazon right now, it's, like, 50 bucks or something. But that's still, like, it's only decreased $10. Like, I don't know. Nintendo always does this. And uh, I use my Switch a lot. Like you said, I, I I use it quite a bit, and it's. I feel like I use it more for indie titles because they are always I don't know fifteen twenty bucks and all these like uh, I've even played Odyssey yet. Like I have a Switch, dude. I've even played half of these fucking games that like AAA. Well, I, and, I got Odyssey uh, as well. First and party. I only played like the first three or four levels. Yeah, so it's it's rough. It's rough out here if you don't have as much money well you as, know what I, uh, you know what, yeah exactly I, i've been wanting to get like kind of the, the more simpler like the other games they got like um uh mario tennis but i don't want to pay 60 dollars for mario tennis i'll pay yeah, i'll pay like, i want to pay 20 exactly put it for up for 20 i'll buy it i will not pay it for it for 60. yeah dude 20 dollars i bought buy mario tennis right now yeah absolutely like, i would buy mario tennis like, for hands right now. down uh, but it's not gonna happen. <laughs> and I will not buy Mario Tennis. <laughs> However, uh, you were talking about Blasphemous earlier. Yeah. I, I was thinking of buying Blasphemous for Nintendo Switch, and uh, that's only like twenty something dollars. And I'll see that that's the type of game that is like perfect for Switch, and I and that's 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 what I want. But I think it'd be perfect. Oh, here's the thing. One of the things I actually really like about the Switch is that. Uh, the, the screen quality, you know what I mean? So playing a game, playing any game on the Switch, like uh, not on the TV, but uh, like on your handheld, it always yeah. looks beautiful no matter what you're playing. And so, oh, 100%. Because it's, it's straight up like, I don't know, is it HDR? I feel like it's HDR. I don't think it is. Because, matter of fact, I think it degrades in quality. I think it's like well, not even 720p or something. I, don't, I have no idea. And, and, and maybe this is a product of the fact it's such a small screen. So it doesn't have to yeah. like, uh, you know, even if it's it still looks good. lower, even if it's, yeah, because the smaller the screen is, the the better quality you're going to get just simply because it's not like being bloated and expanded. Mm-hmm. But um, I, uh, I actually recently bought, uh, what was it? What was that Zelda game that came out where that was a collaboration with the, the it's like the dance one where you're moving around the, the, oh. the beat. Oh, yeah, it was like uh, it, it, I know the original game is a Dance of the Necromancer, but yeah. I'm pretty sure the Zelda one was something else. So but I bought the Zelda one on on the Switch, and I actually had fun playing it. And but for some reason, I just, I fell off. I, I I played a couple. I played like three or four hours of it, and then I just I, I fell off. And and it's not yeah, that long Cadence either. of Hyrule was that game. Cadence of Hyrule, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I I Which felt it was a good game. Dope. It just didn't hold my interest long enough for my uh, yeah. I don't know how much I paid for it. Was it twenty or thirty dollars? See, speaking of tales, uh, when we were talking about tales earlier, tales of Vesperia, I have on the Switch, and I I play that co-op with my girlfriend, and we have a ton of fun. And I also play a little bit, and I grind, and I try to get past like the some of the more tough stuff. Uh, whenever uh, we go to bed and stuff like that, and I, and I pick it up, and Tales games, if you are able to get Tales of Vesperia on the Switch, I recommend it. It's awesome, you're able to pick it up, and it looks phenomenal. Like, it still looks great. Like you said, like, when games are a, a little smaller, and you have it on the handheld, it looks amazing. And so, I, I really do want to try these, like, big AAA, like, Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild type shit, and, uh, but again, $60, man. Come on, Nintendo. <laughs> I'm not paying. I'm not paying that. It's how long has Legend of Zelda been out? Like fucking years. A couple of years, yeah. Come on. We're waiting for yeah, the sequel, like man. Fifty dollars? Are you Se- serious? The sequel's gonna come. I bet. I bet it'll drop in price once the sequel comes out. Uh, that's true. But then I want to play the sequel. Well, then buy the damn game. You know it's worth sixty dollars. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what. You, I don't know what your mind's doing. What kind of loops you're jumping through? You know, whatever. But whatever you're doing, it's wrong. I guess if. 
if it's a game that I'm just kind of like playing offhandedly on the Switch. You won't be. You'll as play I go it to and bed. Get sucked in. I'll probably yeah. never see you again. Well, the podcast will be done. <laughs> probably. Yeah, podcast fucking over. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, maybe it is worth. It, it probably is, but I don't know. I don't want to. Money is. Uh, Nintendo doesn't really care about the the lower about the common class, man. So, the common man. Yes. Next game that we got is uh, Nino Kuni: Wrath of the Witch King Remastered. Ah, you I love that you word, like remastered. No, I mean, I, I don't <laughs> like. I think it's cool. I'm glad that it's coming out on like PC, PS4, and Switch because it was it was only on what the PS3. I played on the PS3. This yeah. is one of my favorite RPGs of all time. It it's just got that magic. You know, when, when you used to play Final Fantasy VII as a kid, Final Fantasy X, the, those those old school games that uh, that has that quality and that magic that that you don't find anymore with cur- with current RPGs. You, that magic. Well, I mean, Dragon Quest XI might be able to, to conjure that magic too, but but not a lot. I mean, even like the new Final Fantasies, it's not the same. It's not it's not, it's not the magic. Yeah. It, it's, you'll you'll have fun playing those games. They're fun, but they're they're a little bit more too Western or 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 too modern. And Nino really? Kuni, you just, think they're a little too modern? Yeah, I think they're. I think the opposite, man. I think they're a little a little too. Japanese for me, man. Like whoa, 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 whoa. I played. You, you just said you're acting like Japanese means it's not modern. You know, there's, no. You know I mean, Japanese it could be modern Japanese. Modern games. Yeah, yeah. They could. They could totally be Persona Five. Games. Yeah, I mean, Persona Five is a masterpiece. But with Dino you know, Kuni, I played the original on PS3, and it was it was okay. But did you beat I it? I don't know, man. No, I didn't beat it. How, how far did you get into it? I don't know. <laughs> uh, I I probably, <laughs> I really don't know. Uh, I remember the kid falling off his bike or something, and falling into a river or some shit. But so what? You like played uh, the first thirty minutes? Yeah, like the first thirty minutes. The, the, uh, the beginning was boring. The the beginning, I, I sh- but it's I think it's necessary. The game didn't start pulling me in. Like I didn't start feeling the magic until I got into the sewers of Ding Dong Dell, which is which is basically the first time the game stops holding your hand. And uh, it just kind of says go. I mean, there's, it's RPG, so there's still little tutorials here and there. But that's when you start feeling like you have more control over what's going on. And it starts feeling like you're playing the game now. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks great. I mean, the they have that um, Studio Ghibli type feel to it. And well, considering it, uh, it's made by Studio Ghibli. so Well, yeah. Well, I shouldn't say made. It's made <laughs> well, by Level 5, but... It's, co-created by Studio Ghibli who wrote the story and did the art. Oh, well, perfect. There you go. And it's it it looks good and I I really did want to give it a shot. So you should you should pay yeah, $60 I, I should for it. give it more of a Oh, see. <laughs> no, no. Wait, dude. wait, wait till it gets cheaper, especially <laughs> since you seem very lukewarm about it. Pick it I mean, it, I mean this isn't made by Nintendo, so it's it's going to drop in price, I would hope. Yeah. And if it drops in price, I'll definitely pick that up. Because uh, I'm definitely down. It, it, everything I've heard about it, it sounds good. I just didn't dedicate the time to it at the time when I was playing it on PS3, and it it, it looks good, and I and I definitely want to play it. And it looks better than the second game. <laughs> the second, I actually played. See, I was so hyped for the second game uh, because I love the first, and uh, I beat in the second game. And it's, really, it's Damn. yeah, yeah, yeah. They changed they changed the gameplay. So the first the first Nino Kuni was kind of like a, had like a Pokemon thing where you, you caught monsters and you use them in, your, in battle, and um, the yeah. second one was more uh, hack and slash, using uh, I shouldn't say using combos really, but it, it, you were using abilities and stuff, and, and that wasn't the problem. The combat really wasn't the problem. I mean it was kind of it was kind of easy, um, but the combat wasn't the problem. It was just that the heart and the like because. The second one wasn't written by Studio Ghibli, and you could tell the heart wasn't there. Oh, that sucks. And yeah. on top of that, I think I think one of the, a big thing too was that the budget apparently wasn't there either because half the game, if not more than half, like maybe eighty percent of the game was not voice acted. So you'll see her voice really? acting, and then all of a sudden it'll go to just written word, and or, uh, you're just reading subtitles now. And uh. yeah, 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 it takes you out. And and Nino Kuni one was completely voice acted, so. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, to me, so, that was a it, it was a huge deal. It really, it really. And maybe I don't know. Maybe that's why I didn't have the heart. But um, but so you would recommend playing Nino Kuni one way over Nino Kuni two. Then. Yes. 
Um, okay. If you, I still, I mean, Nino Kuni Two is still like a quality RPG. It's not bad, but it's nowhere near Nino Kuni One levels of special. Cool. And next one on the list. The next one is uh, the Sojourn. This is coming out for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. <laughs> Sojourn is a 3D puzzle game that has the player switch between light and dark modes in order to solve puzzles. Okay. Yeah, uh, <laughs> let me see. I, I'm looking at, you know what, there's not really any screenshots that are really showing me what this game is here. Um, I'm sure if I just Google it, I can find it. Yeah, The Sojourn. Yeah, what, is, what does this game look like here? I mean... I'm sure it's more. Ooh, it's, it's kind of like a. Indie, it looks right? like a 3D puzzle game, like you're walking around as a character. Oh, maybe it's first person actually. Wait, what? Yeah, it's a first person puzzle game. It has a it has a nice looking art style. Um, the screenshots I'm seeing make it look kind of. Uh, the environments look a little little blocky. Um, okay. But I don't mean that in a bad way. It, it's just yeah. kind of the way it looks. I, it kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, games like The Witness or The Talos Principle. It kind of looks like it's in that vein. I could be completely wrong, so I don't want to like misdirect what this game is. But if it's a 3D puzzle yeah. game that's first person, and, and it, the screenshots kind of convey it as that kind of game, um, huh. it could actually be really good because I actually like those kind of games. Yeah. I wonder what the reviews say. Um. Uh, if it's like not, I mean, I like indie games and shout out to all the indie developers out there that are struggling and making their games and everything, but there's so much, man. <laughs> <laughs> you really have to make your game just absolutely pop for me to actually pay attention to it. And it, uh, and I, it's not just me. I feel like that's just the general public. You really have to make your game pop. I mean, that's, and I, I agree with you. Uh, a seventy, it's got to be at least eighty or better type of thing. Because here's the thing: there's so many games that come out. I don't have time to play your your just good game. You know, I need to play a great game. Yeah. And yeah, you're just like, oh, I made this, and I was at school, and I was by myself, and I did it my senior year of high, of college, and it's like, cool, but eh. <laughs> and this game, uh, eh. <laughs> I, I just looked it up. There's just not any reviews for it, so. Yeah, we'll I don't find think. out when it pops up on Steam. Yeah, unless it's not a Steam exclusive. I don't know. See, nowadays I don't know. It could be on Epic. That's true. Could, it could uh, well, legitimately Epic, be on they, Epic. They kind of, they the Epic kind of like really curates its games. You know what I mean? I feel like if you go on the Epic Store, there's not too much. Oh, it's on Steam. Nonsense. It's on Steam. Um, but it's supposed to come out on the twentieth. So it looks cool. I mean, it has a cool look to it. So. Yeah, I mean. But uh, outside of that, I think we have one more maybe. Let me see. Um, one more game on my list. Did I just lose this list? I did. <laughs> Fair enough. How did I lose this list? I started looking up Sojourn and I got off of it. Okay, so. Untitled Goose Game. So is this like Goose Simulator? That's what I'm assuming this is. Uh, there's no... Be a Horrible Goose <laughs> and house, House's second game. Oh, okay. So, so I imagine that's probably another just kind of indie nonsense. You just... A goose. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, it doesn't even look like... A, you know, it doesn't look... When you think of a simulator game, I almost think of a goat simulator type of look. Yeah. But this kind of has a different art style. So... Um, I don't know how to... I See, if I try to describe this art style, I'm going to do a really bad job. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. That's fine. It's slightly isometric, um, more zoomed in, and it looks kind of like a, um, kind of more of a two D ish, yeah, like half three D ish uh, art style. Yeah, and you're like a goose, Again, and you're trying to like indie. annoy this gardener. It looks like like turning on the sprinkler while he's trying to like pull his carrots. Yep. But. Uh, I don't know. Could be fun. I don't mean to be like pushing it. down indie games. It's just there's a lot. Man, I all there's I hear so is that you hate many indie coming games, out, man. Yeah, like there's just so many indie games. And nowadays games, you can you download free price software. For Nintendo games. Yeah, exactly. You we can pay sixty dollars for Legend of Zelda, <laughs> or you could pay this five dollars or whatever it is for this Untitled Goose game. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> I think. 
this Goose game looks like it could be good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is it worth... I mean, there's so many games out, like, people are playing Gears. Is it, like, actually worth going through and, and pick it up, you think? I mean, there's so many games that are coming out, like you said earlier. I mean, and the new consoles aren't even out yet. And we have all these games coming out for all these systems, and it's 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 rough out there. Um, so. I mean, I, I can't say. It's all preference. Some people like these weird games. I mean, there's people who play um, freaking truck simulator and farming simulator. That's true. And yeah. I don't understand that, but they, they all have a market, I suppose. Yep. So I'm sure this one does, too. <laughs> true but that's it that's that's all the games that i got on my list all right um, not exactly the most exciting list in my opinion of games that are coming out but i mean the two the two big ones i think are legend of zelda Link's awakening and um well maybe it's just one big one i mean they got nino kuni remastered but I I, that's a remaster so i wouldn't count that as super exciting yeah that's true and castle crasher is remastered as well right exactly uh which is kind of whatever and then you have uh other honorable mentions is ai the somnia files which is uh the essentially yeah. what i would consider a new zero escape game it looks like um yeah yeah definitely check that one out uh overland which has the isometric view that's uh has a beautiful art style very unique looking and uh that one might be worth at least you know checking out some screenshots or a video of see if it's uh piques your interest for sure. And then the Sojourn, which looks like another like 3D puzzle game in the in the veins of the Talos Principle or the Witness. Um, but this is all just first impressions. I actually didn't do any research on these games. It's all off the list. I just I literally, you know, this is the first time I've heard of any of those games. I just looked at the screenshots, kind of gave my impression of yeah, them. Yeah, which is crazy. I'm surprised we haven't heard of uh, the AI, the Selenium, the, the Somnium. Like I feel like Somnium, that's, that, yeah. that 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 should be big, but. Yeah, you'd think, yeah. you'd think, because the Zero Escape, I mean, maybe, I don't know, maybe the Zero, the Zero Escape games probably weren't that big. Uh, At least here in the West. Yeah. I mean, were they big in, in Japan? Uh, Maybe. I would assume so, because they kept making them. That's true. They did keep making them. <laughs> That's it. All right. Sounds good. Uh, let's go ahead and jump to uh, a new segment that I've created for this uh, kind of newer newer podcast we're doing here and it is uh clickbait titles so normally i hate these clickbait like clickbaity titles that they always come out at the end of the week they know you're going to click on them and so we are going to give you the gist of them so that way you don't give them any clicks and uh this one <laughs> i don't even know <laughs> what to think of this man it is absolutely insane so uh this one's actually not even a video game it's actually just a board game which is which is fine. I'm kind of deviating a little bit here, but uh, <laughs> let me just read this title to you. <laughs> again, this is just to poke fun at, and it's to make us laugh. And uh, and again, so that way you don't have to click on this and give give the, any of these people any any of your money. Uh, but so this is uh, a quote: "In the new game of Monopoly, women make more than men." And this is uh, a CNN post by Leah Osmelesh. Osmelesh. Uh, <laughs> so here's a little quote out of that article here. Uh, quote, unlike the classic game, women will collect 240 Monopoly bucks when they go pass or when they pass go, uh, while male players will collect the usual 200. The idea is to create a game where women make more than men. The first game to do so, according to Hasbro. So uh, this is kind of like another clickbaity type, like you know, turn heads type article where it's like, oh man. All, all I'm imagining I don't right now is, is just like a table of women playing Miss Monopoly, and just everybody at the table is just getting 240 bucks. Because I can't see, I can't see, I don't, I don't see what the point of this is. Like I. I and they say the idea is to create a game where women make more than men, the first game to do so. But are, are they trying to say, like, is the implication that there's games out there that where men make more than women? I, I don't think there's any board Yeah, I mean, in regular Monopoly, everyone makes the same amount, right? <laughs> That's why I don't understand this you, at all. You don't understand the, the institutionalized uh, sexism that's in Monopoly. 
Yeah, it's crazy. And apparently in the past they've made games like Monopoly Socialism, where I guess, I don't know if there's like no money or what the hell is going on in that. Uh, and then they also have like Monopoly. A Monopoly for Millennials. Yeah, it's it's absolutely crazy. And I just thought it was hilarious. And uh, it's not exactly video game news, but again, it's something that just kind of like it came out of left field and is just totally random. So I wanted to go ahead and present that to you guys. Uh, it, definitely look it up. It's from uh, CNN.com. And yeah, it's, it's it's totally crazy. So uh, if they made, I don't know. I don't know if you have any do they, opinions do they, on that, Does it that, cost Ralph? less if you're a woman? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it costs as much as I want as any other Monopoly game. So. Wow, and they're really they're they're. St- I feel like they could really make a statement if they did that. Yeah, I don't know what Hasbro's thinking. They they've been coming out with these random ass Monopoly games, and this is just one that I thought was super weird. Like women make more than men, and when they pass go every single time, and uh, it's 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 odd. But uh, normally I'll be giving you guys uh, some more video game journalism news uh which was uh, again more more cl- clickbait but yeah this is uh this was one that i just thought was absolutely hilarious and was a hilarious read so yeah and uh i think that 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 pretty much ends it for this crouch jump podcast what it's the end already it is the end uh if you guys liked it go ahead and like and subscribe to the channel and actually, leave a comment if we got something wrong or if we Before we go through the end, idiots, actually, but... I have one more thing I want to talk about. What's that one more S- thing? Something we skipped. Something we skipped. Uh, the Nintendo Switch Lite. Oh, yes, that's right. The Nintendo Switch Lite is coming out here soon. Yeah. What? What? what see, I don't know anything about that. What, what is the Nintendo Switch Lite? So the Nintendo Switch Lite is... Oh, boy. Uh, it's the only handheld version, so you don't plug it up to a TV. Okay. So think like a 3DS or something, but it's only the Switch. Makes sense. And, yeah, the, the Joy-Cons, they're attached to the console, so you can't actually detach them. Uh, it's like a full it's like a full screen with the Joy-Cons soldered on. Uh, it's really weird. Uh, but I guess it's for the younger, much, much younger audience. Well, I that, mean, uh, it could be that. I mean, but also in Japan, you know, a lot of them, a lot of I, that's why handheld gaming is so popular in Japan is because you know they got to do a lot of traveling, uh, to and from work and school. Like they got those trains and stuff like that, and uh, and I could see that being an attractive option, especially. I mean, how much cheaper is it? Uh, that's a good question. Because I think that's going to be the the big selling point for this. I mean, I would hope that it it be significantly cheaper, and by that I mean, I mean, how much is the Nintendo Switch right now? How much does it cost? Like three hundred. So the Nintendo Switch Lite is two hundred bucks. How much is the Nintendo uh, Switch? USD. And the Nintendo Switch is about three hundred dollars. So you're saving about a hundred dollars, and you don't get to plug it up to your TV. See, that's huge. As far as I know. That's significant. That's yeah. significant. Yeah, it's very significant. Uh, it it still shows. I'm kind of looking at the pictures of it. It looks like you might be able to, if you already have a Switch or something, you might be able to to shove it in that dock but i don't it doesn't look like it comes with a dock itself so if you already have a switch and you want to get a switch light i believe you could hook that switch light up to the dock because it looks like it has all the same ports and everything right then that's because that's going to be like the charge port right yeah in, pretty in, much anyways. and but it doesn't look like it comes with one so if you want to play your switch games on your tv the switch light yeah, is not can, for you you can't charge it if you buy this yes. Switch Lite, you can play it for about 15 hours, and you got to buy a new one. You have to buy a brand new one. <laughs> Perfect. No, nah, I don't think that's how that works. <laughs> I just want to talk about At the all. Nintendo Switch Lite because I saw that we uh, – I skipped over it, so. Yeah. Uh, but if the Switch Lite is for you, like the video. We could also <laughs> talk about, actually, the Sega Genesis mini console. Um, I don't – I'm not exactly super excited for this, but I'm sure there's plenty of people who are. Um, yeah, there's like really weird games coming out for it yeah, this it's, week. It's loaded with 40, uh, as they like to the quote unquote legendary games. So you plug and play right into your TV. Um, but they're not all coming out at the same time. That's it's a like, little weird. Yeah, that's very weird. 
uh, I don't know exactly when the waves are supposed to come, but the first wave already, just kind of like looking at this list here, uh, is not that great. It comes with the first Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> Whoa. If you're into that, but. I feel like, I mean, up? are any of these games like on like PC, like on Steam or something? Uh, Maybe. I would imagine so. I mean, I, I would guess that maybe people would buy this to maybe for their kids to play, you know, like, hey, you know, like, son, these are the games I used to play. Um, kind of still keep them relevant and, and, and some people, uh, otherwise, they'll just kind of like die in, in obscurity. Yeah, like uh, this first wave, if you buy the Sega Genesis mini console, uh, the very first wave, the games that you should get right out of the box is Echo the Dolphin. Castlevania Bloodlines, Space Harrier 2, Shining Force, Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, ToeJ and Earl, Comic Zone, Sonic the Hedgehog, the first one, Altered Beast, and Gunstar Heroes. Now, I was a pretty... I mean, I probably played my Sega Genesis more than I played my Nintendo, which is crazy, because I, I for some dumb reason, I liked Sonic more than I liked Mario, but... I don't recognize half of these games, man. That is just a weird list, especially right out of the box with that Wave 1. I know it's going to be updated later, but that is just odd. Well, the thing that gets me, uh, and I don't, I don't really, I don't I don't know if you want to list off every game and every wave, but um, the thing that gets me is that you got Sonic the Hedgehog in the first wave. You have Sonic 2 in the second wave. And then there's no Sonic 3 or Sonic and Knuckles. Yeah, that's super weird. You, you'd yeah, think I, that those that, would that, automatically be defaulted into this thing. Yeah, but it's not. I think in Wave 2, or no, Wave 3, you get Fantasy Star 4, which I know I like. I played one of them, but, but I can't remember which one it was. Yeah. I, I remember, I remember is... liking it, but I remember just dying right off the bat every single time. Yeah. You get Sonic Pinball hey, eventually. I, played, I think I played that. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Sonic Pinball, this has no relevance to Sega Genesis Mini Console, but for some reason I just remembered Pokemon Pinball on the Game Boy Color, and I think yes. it was Color. Great game. Oh my god, that game was so much fun. Why was that so much fun? Yeah, it was amazing. But uh, we will go ahead and end it there for the Crouch Jump podcast. If you liked it, go ahead and leave a like. If you want to shit on us and uh, make fun of us and uh, say how wrong we are about so many things, go and leave a comment. But most importantly, share with your friends. Have a good night, everyone. Hey.